Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, right now we are starting a series of lectures which uh, I believe is the purpose of the whole course. Solving problems, of course. Well, in this case we will solve a few problems um, in solid geometry. Um, problems primarily related to pyramids. Uh, obviously we will have other uh, series of lecture for other aspects of uh, solid geometry, but right now we're talking about pyramids and we will solve like three, four different problems. Obviously, I suggest you very strongly to try to solve these problems by yourself. They're all presented on unizor.com um, website. That's where the whole course actually is. Um, it's much better actually to go to this website uh, rather than watching from uh, YouTube um, because the site has comments and there is certain functionality in the site which allows you to take exams etc. Alright, so right now we are talking about a very simple problem. Well, it's as simple as solving a quadratic equation basically. However, what's interesting about this problem is that it's not um, solved just using absolutely uh, direct method like you have a formula for instance for a volume of uh, pyramid and then you just apply this formula and everything goes smoothly no you have to in this particular uh, problem you have to just make one little guess one little trick if you wish and that's very important actually um, I, I, I don't really like the problems where you just go with some kind of calculations according to existing algorithms or formulas etc. Problem must contain something interesting in itself which uh, forces you to think about it and I think this is an example of a simple problem which after this little trick is applied is really simple. Before if you are attempting to do it a little bit more straightforward that would be much more difficult let's put it this way. All right, so what's the problem? Uh, as follows, you have a triangular pyramid which has an interesting property. No, oh, actually this is a solid line. I see it. All right, triangular pyramid. S, A, B, C. Now, what's known about this pyramid is the following. First of all, all angles are straight at the top. So, um, angles A, S, B equals angle B, S, C equals angle C, S, A equals 90 degrees. So all these are right angles um, at the apex for every side face. So every side face is a right triangle where side edges are casualty of these triangles. So that's known. Another known thing is that three side edges represent their lengths actually, represent gem, um, arithmetic progression. Arithmetic progression. So we know one of them, A. We don't know this and that, but we do know that they represent an arithmetic progression, which means SB is equal to A plus X, where X is a difference, and SC is equal to SB plus X, or if you wish, SA plus, I mean, A. plus 2X. So that's also known. Now, is that sufficient to 
um, basically define our pyramid? Well, not exactly. We have one more condition. We have the volume of the pyramid. Equals V. So we know A, we know V, and we know that these angles are right angles. Now what we have to define, we have to determine actually, is all these three edges. Well, we know one of them, so basically we have to define, we have to, de uh, we have to determine the X, the difference in this arithmetic progression, by how much this edge is longer than this, and this is longer than that. Okay, now, obviously, it would be nice to have some kind of equation relative to x. And the equation probably would be something like, well, if um, you can express the area of the base, a, b, c, in terms of a and x, which probably is possible. I, I just don't, don't know how to do it easily, but I'm sure there is a way. You obviously can determine, since you know A, and you know A plus X, and this is the right triangle, you know hypotenuse. So you know hypotenuse, which is AB, same thing, you have this, same thing, you have AC. So you know all three uh, sides of this triangle in terms of A and X, or A plus X and A plus 2X. So you know this, using the theorem, the Pythagorean theorem. Now, since you know three sides, you basically know the triangle, which means you can determine its area. That would be the area of the base of this pyramid. Uh, you can use the Heron's formula or whatever else. Now, a little bit more difficult would be to determine the altitude of this pyramid. Not impossible, obviously, but, but a little bit difficult. So, it will be lots and lots of calculations. And uh, I think that uh, it would be so much that you would probably give up because it, it's just, you know, too tedious and boring, to tell you the truth. We must think about something else, and that's exactly what I meant when I was talking that there is a little trick which would allow you to simplify the problem very, very significantly. So what's the trick? Well, <coughs> look, this is a triangular pyramid. Now, in the triangular pyramid, any vertex can serve as an, an apex of the pyramid and the opposite um, face could be uh, a base. In this case, I said that S is an apex and ABC is um, the base of this pyramid. But let's turn it on one of the sides. Let's say, let's consider ABS as a base and C as an apex. Let me just uh, red draw this pyramid. So C would be on the top and then would be going down would be CS and from the point S at the right angle I have 1 and 2. So I have A and B. So this would be my base in this case, this is invisible. And what's interesting is that this angle is right angle, this angle is right angle, and this angle is right angle. So all three angles at this particular vertex are right. Now, what does it buy us? Well, it buys us a lot. Because, number one, we know that since CS is perpendicular to SB and SA, CS is perpendicular to the ABS, which is the base. So, CS is an altitude. Now, this is A, this is A plus X, and this is A plus 2X. So, we already know that the altitude is very simply expressed in terms of A and X. In this case, altitude would be very complex in terms of A uh, 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 and, and X. In this case, it's much easier it's, uh, because it's already perpendicular. So all we needed to do is to turn it on a side. Now, as far as the area of uh, A, B, S, the uh, area of the base of this pyramid, it's also simple. 
because it's a right triangle with two casualty A and A plus X, which means the area of the base is equal to A times A plus X divided by 2. And altitude is equal to A plus 2X. So, very easy. Volume V, this one, is equal to one-third of the area of the altitude, A, A plus X, divided by 2, and A plus 2X. And this is an equation for X, and this is a quadratic equation, obviously, so all we have to do is just to solve the quadratic equation. And that would give us S, X, and uh, knowing X, we know all these uh, sides, because one is A, another is A plus X, and another is A plus 2X. So let's just solve this quadratic equation, and that would be the end of it. It's much simpler than to fight the original uh, pyramid. I mean, it's still original pyramid, but consider it slightly differently, because in triangular pyramid case, any apex can be um, any vertex can be an apex and, and, and any uh, face can be a base. All right, so let's just solve this quadratic equation. This is a plain exercise. All I have to do is make it right. Equals, so 6 goes to V, right? So here I have this, but every one of them is multiplied by A. So X squared would be what? 2X squared and A. So it's 2ax squared. Now x would be ax and 2ax, so it's 3ax and a, so it's 3a square x. And finally the free one would be a square and a, so it's a cube. So that's my quadratic equation. I will do it this way. I will put minus 6v equals to 0. All right? That's a canonical form of quadratic equation. So, uh, solution to this R, in the denominator I have double first coefficient, which is 4a. Now here I have minus the second coefficient, minus 3a squared, plus minus square root of square of this, which is 9a to the fourth, minus 4 times this and this. 4 times this is 8a to the fourth, and this is 8 a 6 plus, so it's 48 AV. Alright, X equals. <coughs> First of all, forget about this minus because we are talking about the lengths. <coughs> Excuse me. We are talking about the lengths of the of the side. And uh, um, so it should be positive. With two minuses, it will be negative. I mean, it's not the length actually; it's the um, it's the difference between the lengths. But we have um, basically uh, set the uh, the smallest one as a, and then a plus x and a plus two x. So we are uh, assuming that x is positive. All right. So the solution would be the solution would be for a minus 3a squared plus square root of uh, 9 minus 8, a to the fourth plus 48ab. Okay, that's the solution for x, which means that we have determined the, all the side edges. This was given to us as b was equal to a plus x which is a plus this expression and sc was a plus 2x which is a plus 2 times this same expression so that's the solution that's the end of it we have determined all three sides 
So what I suggest to you right now is to go to the notes of this lecture, read again uh, the problem. Um, well, it has an answer, by the way. This formula is an answer. Um, and try to do it just by yourself. Turn it on the side, draw a picture, and just write down, this is the base, and this is the area of the base, this is an altitude, that's its value, and then the volume is equal to, etc. So I do suggest you to do it yourself. Very helpful exercise. Well, that's it. Uh, thank you very much, and good luck.